Welcome all you True Plan members, it's me, Monkey Chicken here, helping all of them green goblins. Well anyways guys, the topic of today's video is PlayStation 4 and Xbox One talk. And with that, let's go ahead and begin. Oh yeah guys, so first that I want to say, you know, this isn't a comparison, this isn't, oh, which one's better, which one should you buy, it's not that at all, um, it's, it's, it's just not me, um, if there's one thing you guys will quickly kind of learn about me, I am not a bandwagoner, I hate bandwagons, I hate, you know, when the Xbox said some stupid stuff and then everyone was like, oh, Xbox, oh, it sucks, and everyone just jumped on the pile of everyone saying it sucks just to do whatever it was i'm not a bandwagoner anyways guys so this video is just gonna be me talking about stuff you know um i this is the way i look at it i wanted to wait a little bit because you know after that initial explosion of information showing consoles and everything you know like at e3 all these other gaming conventions i figured that that was original that was their throw against the wall to see you know what the customer caught stuck and wanted to keep and then what fell to the ground because no one liked it. And that was the initial throw. And I figured, you know, it would take a couple throws before, you know, that we would more than less see what we're going to be talking about and getting in the next generation of consoles. So now I feel, you know, like a month later after that kind of initial throw, it's kind of safe for me to talk about stuff because more than likely this is what's going to be in the next gen consoles. So with that, let's go and start off with subscription, um, the paid subscription stuff going on. And I really want to talk about the Xbox One because. This is something that is just so freaking weird to me that they say, you know, hey, you can hook up your TV. Hey, you can go on Skype. Hey, you can go on Netflix. Hey, you can add your friends. Hey, look at this amazing dashboard. Hey, look at this. And if you want to do that, you got to give us money. They're, they're selling you on these on these features that you have to pay extra upon for. And that's something that I've never really liked about the Xbox model is, you know, hey, you can play, you know, these single player games. We're selling you a gaming console that play single player games but the entire gaming experience you know playing with your friends you know doing all these other things with this console you have to pay us for it's it's kind of like you just i'm selling you on a computer and then you can't access the internet unless you pay me more money and that's something that's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way with the way that i look at it is because it's it's never made sense to me you know it's it's not like hey i don't have internet i'm Paying for you to bring internet to my house for me to access all these amazing features. It's you're selling me a console on these features, and now I have to pay to access those features after I've already bought the console. And that's something that I've never really liked about the Xbox model. But what are you gonna do? The one thing that um, I do want to quickly note is the PlayStation 4 is actually running on a similar model in the sense that if you want to access multiplayer games, and this right here, like Call of Duty multiplayer, if you want to access multiplayer, you have to pay for PlayStation Plus. As far as I'm aware of, they're both the same price, five bucks a month. Um, the thing is, I kind of like the PlayStation 4's model a lot better because I don't know if you guys, you know, are Xbox fans or PlayStation fans, whether or not you've had PlayStation Plus. Um, when I have had PlayStation Plus, you know, I've had it for like four months, not like right now, but the first month was when there was an initial down and then, you know, they gave PlayStation Plus to everyone. And then recently I bought a PlayStation 3 and they gave me um, free three months. So in the time that I have used it, it was actually a really enjoyable experience because you get early access to betas. You get free hour long trials to games. It's not like, hey, we give you the first mission. No, they give you an hour and whatever you can get in an hour is what you can play. And that is just so freaking cool. And you get discounts on avatars, you get discounts, you know, on themes, you get discounts on games, you get um, early access to stuff. And that's the reason why I kind of really like it, because this is the way I look at it. For PlayStation Plus, you get all these really good deals for doing this thing. And for Xbox, you just get to access the features that you should have already. Like, for PlayStation, you get more and better games and deals with PlayStation Plus. Whereas with Xbox, you're you're not paying for the deals; you're paying to access those features, and that's something where I'm like, if I were to if I were to buy something, I would kind of go for the PlayStation Plus's thing because that's what I kind of like. Trying to, I know I just said it wasn't going to be about which one is better, but I just wanted to talk about that. That's um, and the main thing why I brought it up was because some people may or may not know that in order to play multiplayer games on the PlayStation Four, you have to have PlayStation Plus. And as far as I'm aware of, if you have PlayStation Plus right now, if you were to buy it this month, you it would carry over into your account onto PlayStation Four. If you guys are wondering that, your account, everything you have right now carries over. Um, as far as I'm aware of, though, 
the games that you bought on this account don't equate to over there because they haven't converted them or changed them. Not to say that, you know, they are going to change and then, you know, when it pops up on there, you just get download it again but you know anything that you everything that you have right now that you know all, all your account information if you have like 30 bucks on your account you go to the PlayStation um, for there should still be 30 bucks on your account that's what I'm trying to talk about uh, next let's kind of talk about the exclusive games because this has kind of been a pretty big topic and what I mean by it is there there's a lot of people saying you know oh Titanfall oh this game oh that this is making this better than this and me personally, when I'm thinking about all these exclusive games and, you know, some people are saying, oh, why don't we just leave all the old series behind, you know, with this one. And it's mainly, you know, about hater talk with this or that. And a lot of people are like just kind of continuing some of the traditional series and talking about these newer ones, talking about what's going to be the killer of this, what's going to change this, what's going to get rid of this. And people are just so fed up with these um, games that have been going on, like Call of Duty. And the way I'm looking at it is people are completely forgetting that Call of Duty is going to change in the sense that it's 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 still going to be Call of Duty. They're not going to take away the first person. They're not going to take away the fact that you run at like 10 times the speed of which a normal human can do. That's always going to be there in Call of Duty. There's always going to be some form of maybe modern guns. If they make a push to the future and we start running around with lasers and stuff, that'll probably be a few games away. But... For right now, they still have the formula of, you know, super fast paced, you got these traditional guns that everyone's kind of used to. If they were to just go straight from, you know, some crazy modern game thing like Black Ops and then, you know, jump into the future and we all running around with lightsabers and stuff, people were like, whoa, what the hell, where's Call of Duty, this isn't what I'm used to. But, and that's what people were like, oh, dude, it's the same Call of Duty, why even care about it? And the way that I want to talk about this is the games are going to be changing, guys, because think about it. Not only is there new hardware, but the discs themselves are changing because look at it this way. The Xbox is running on HD discs. As far as I'm aware of, it's like 12 gigs of memory on the disc, whereas PlayStation is running on Blu-ray, which is 24 gigs of memory. So we've just doubled the memory that we can put on these discs. And people are forgetting about this doubled layer blu-ray they were able to put two layers of blu-ray on these freaking discs and up the memory to near 50 gigabytes of memory guys they literally they could put twice the much stuff into these games now and we have the hardware to actually run these games so call of duty there's gonna be a bunch of freaking customization in these games why do you think you're seeing well you're not really seeing it right now but they talked about you can customize a whole bunch on your call of duty characters and on the the battlefield they're like oh you can customize a whole bunch of your guns and everything oh we're able to make all these buildings fall and everything it's because we freaking just doubled the memory so before everyone jumps on the exclusive bandwagon and searching with a fine tooth comb to see which one is going to knock down the original series and everyone's knocking down these series dude these series are going to not so much change, but I want to say that word change. It's not going to be, you know, this limited little sphere right now. Granted, this generation, you know, this year, you know, I don't know, Christmas 2013 and, uh, you know, to 2014. Granted, those games aren't going to be the most exploding different game ever. For the reason being that they're still limited by this generation of um, consoles. But next year, when it comes to 2014 Christmas, that's when you're going to really start to see the full capability of these next-gen con uh, next consoles from these um, traditional games that we're playing right now. Granted, the exclusives are going to be looking really cool, but to knock down a series is not going to really happen. Granted, these exclusives are going to really show the capabilities of each system. You know, I'm, I'm not even 100% sure which one's exclusive on which. I'm just freaking excited about all these different games and I'm really looking forward to these things instead of trying to find, you know, hey guys, I got breaking news, this one looks cool, it's gonna break this game. I don't know. Went on a little rant there. Um, oh, and if you guys haven't noticed, I uploaded, I got two videos of Search and Destroy going in the background and I'll talk for a bit. <laughs> um, next, let's talk about the controllers. Um, I want to quickly talk about the Xbox and then I'll talk about the PlayStation controller. The Xbox, as far as I'm aware of, um, I heard they added in like some extra rumblers around the controller. So like, if you're shooting your gun or if you get punched in the fingernails or something, like your, the rumblers near your fingers like rumble or something like that, like they got specific rumbles, like that's what I've heard. Um, next, that they've changed the thumbsticks like supposedly it's supposed to help you aim better and then 
they've with the really big thing is they changed the audio jacks for the way you talk for the playstation people who don't know what i'm talking about on xbox you know near the hilt of the controller there's a little audio jacks that you plug everything into and you know you can have the standard little headset where you just plug it in and you talk or you can get one of these high-end headsets like turtle beaches whatever you plug it in and talk but on the xbox ones they're changing it they're making a unique jack format so that everything that you're running right now on xbox 360 for your little audio jacks aren't gonna work on the xbox it's gonna be working you're, oh, i'm trying to find the right word to phrase it they got unique positions and the reason why they're doing this is to get into the money for the headsets and everything because you know it's not like xbox is rolling out with you know hey look at our brand new xbox 36 x headsets of sound deprivation 550 like that's not really happening so they're just trying to get into the market of actually making the headsets by making unique jacks I see this as, you know, go ahead, get your money and everything, you know, everyone got to earn their money, but I also see this as kind of a sucky thing for people who've bought, you know, anywhere between 100 to like $300 headsets for their Xbox 360 as kind of like, well, what the hell is this good for now? You know what I mean? For the people who are upgrading to the next generation consoles. And that's where I'm kind of like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm for the companies making money, you know, getting profits where they can, but I'm also kind of a consumer and I worry about the consumer stuff. And then, you know, you think about it like, hey, you know, next generation consoles, you got to move up, you know, gear changes. That's kind of the way this goes on. When you buy a new truck, yeah, you might have to get, you know, a new driving wheel thingy. You know what I mean? It's it's just something that you may have to do. But, you know, at 300 bucks, you know, it's pretty big because that's almost the price of the consoles themselves. But, yeah. Um, so that's what's really going on, on the Xbox. And on the PlayStation, there's actually a bunch of freaking changes. You know, it's not even the same freaking controller anymore. Well, the same freaking controller. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so supposedly from people that I know who have held the controller, supposedly it fits a lot better in your hand. It's a lot more comfortable in your hand as far as I'm aware of. It feels natural, if you will. Like, I don't know what in nature resembles a controller that you hold on a regular basis. But supposedly it's supposed to be pretty relaxing. Um... Some of the thing, one of the big things I want to mention is the little swiping little touchpad that's in the middle of the controller. I know I was ripping on it for a while, like, dude, those things aren't accurate. What the hell would they even be good for? You know, it's garbage. Have you try to, you know, do anything on like on an iPad or you know an iPhone? It's not even an accurate. Hell, when I try to type G, it makes H get pressed. You know, like, what could you possibly do? And from what I'm aware of, from what I've heard from developers, what I've heard from, you know, all these little videos and trailers that developers are making saying, Hey, you look how we're taking advantage of the next gen system. Look at all our stuff. It's freaking amazing. Look at it. And what I'm seeing from all that is they're not planning to use it as like a precision tool. They're planning to use it as a novelty, if you will. Like, hey, you want to flip a page, you know, you swipe it across. Hey, you want to zoom in on your map, you know, you zoom it. You know, you do the same thing that you do on your iPad or your iPhone or your... What, you guys know what I'm talking about. Your touch stuff. You open up your fingers and you freaking zoom in and you slide around and you do it it's going to be for novelty based things just for like immersion or something along those lines it's not going to be for like hey if you want to shoot him in the head you got to turn over there with your little touchpad go x x up y up, up right and then you swipe it in a semicircle with a half up down left and then you shoot him in the head like that's not going to be happening which I'm glad because I was worried, you know, they might make it, like, a key part. Like, if you wanted to guide one of these things, you had to use that little touchpad. Like, dude, God, I would miss so much stuff. There's a lot of crazy little maneuvers I do with those things. <laughs> and it would suck that I would get screwed over by a little touchpad. And, um, apparently the joysticks, the zero balancing has been changed. And, uh, really quickly, I'll touch on that. If you guys don't know what that is, um, that's pretty much when your thumbsticks are resting. They're not moving. That's the zero. And how far you have to move those thumbsticks out for it to respond that, okay, you're moving those things, let's turn or move forwards or do whatever you're, you're doing is. And, and historically, the Xboxes have been a little bit wider and the PlayStations have been a little bit narrower. So people are saying that, you know, the, the PlayStation controllers are a little bit easier to aim because you make those micro adjustments. Supposedly, they have made it even smaller. And in doing so, they changed the thumbsticks so that you can make those micro adjustments with a lot more ease. So that's something that they changed. And then they also have changed the, the triggers so that um, they won't be... Um, I don't know what the right word is. I can't think of it. But they changed the, uh, the, the the way the controllers work, you know, the triggers and whatnot. And I don't know if you guys use Xboxes a lot or PlayStations. I don't know what your preferred thing is. Um, but if you guys have ever used the PlayStation, if you've ever pushed the buttons, they feel, like, mushy um, for, like, the A, X, D. I don't even know the freaking buttons, dude. I just know where they are. <laughs> when you push down on these things, um, it's almost like 
you're stacking it on top of like a spring it's like really weird and it like folds all the way down like in every direction and the reason being is because it had multiple levels so that if you push it down you know like a quarter of a way it could do something then there's like 50 percent then 70 percent and then 100 percent way down whereas the xbox just had a toggle where it's either down or it's up whereas you know playstation had you know like four different levels so equivalently you could have like drove in a car with this you know hey i want it 25 then 50 then 75 then 100 you know miles an hour you could have done that because there's a pressure thing in there and supposedly they took that out and put a toggle in there so it's either pressed or it's not pressed there's none of this little mushy stuff which is pretty cool but that's all i really have to talk about for the consoles um you know if you guys are wondering the drm is out of the way um but, you know, that's that was, like, big news, but I've never really cared about it. You know, it was important to me when I was talking about it. But now that's out of the way, why even bring it up? But we reached in this video. So, guys, like the video if you liked it. Um, let me know, guys, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or topics about this stuff. I would actually honestly like to hear your opinions about the next-gen consoles. I'd really like to read them. But I'm Monkey Jen, guys. That's all I really got. Peace.